Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all having a lovely day. On this channel, we recently went over something that happened with a company called Dymo. Dymo makes a label printer called the Label Writer, and it is a thermal label printer. The idea with a thermal label printer is that instead of using ink to put stuff on the paper, what it does is it uses heat. You use labels that react to heat, and then you use heat in order to print something on the paper. This is really useful because it means that you don't have to monitor the level of ink in your printer. You just have to monitor the paper, which means that you have one less consumable item. Now, these printers are typically not known for being able to make a perfect reenactment of the Mona Lisa. They're just there for you to print things like names, phone numbers, barcodes. I use them at the store for printing barcodes and phone numbers for customer devices, or for printing little labels that say what type of chip is in a drawer, you know, stuff like that, where I don't really care that it look like, you know, 800 DPI or like the Mona Lisa. It just needs to be black and white text that's basically readable to any human with, bare, with decent vision. And one of the things that many printer companies have been doing over the past several years, they've been trying to restrict the ink that you use in their printer because they sell ink. And one of the ways that many printer companies make money, it's not off of selling you the printer, it's off of continuously selling you ink that costs more than it would cost if you bought it from any other manufacturer of ink. Now, with printers like the Dymo Label Writer, they don't use ink. So how are they going to get you? What they've done is they've required that you use their paper. The printer has DRM, and if you try to use paper from another brand that doesn't have this little RFID chip in it, then the paper is not going to work. And most people that buy this printer, myself included, again, even if there was a quality difference between the aftermarket paper and the OEM paper, I'm using this to print disposable labels and barcodes with phone numbers and names on them. I'm not using it to make a reenactment of the Mona Lisa for my $10 million home that I'm showing off to people. So even if the quality were lower, I don't care. I care about the cost savings. And we covered this after the EFF came out with this article on this channel as did Dave Jones on EEB Block, and we were very critical of it. This is something that's going to cause me to never give money to Dymo ever again. I'm going to use my label writer 450 until it dies, and if anything happens to it, I will find a used 450 or I will find another company. Now, many of you have asked what do I think of the fact that the DRM has been bypassed in this printer with a hardware hack. I will leave links down below to this as well as this. This uh, comes with hashtag free Dymo from Hackaday. And it says the generic blue pill board and two resistors are all you need and a few extra cables to make the install clean and reversible. You could definitely solder to the Dymo printer's PCB if needed too. And uh, th there's wiring instructions for it. You got to get the cables. Again, you probably get the cable with the same color pinout, but a pin of rewiring with a needle never hurt anyone. And a lot of people are calling this a win. Now, I want to be clear before I dig into this that I am not trying to insult the people that came up with this hack. I think it's amazing that they're doing it. They're doing the Lord's work. And again, God bless anybody that decides to take time out of their day to figure out how to give you ownership over the devices you own. This is good work and I want to see more of it. I respect the people that did this. That being said, I don't believe this changes anything. Here's the thing. The type of people like Dave Jones that are going to be the type of people that implement a fix like this, they're also the type of people that are going to do their research on the printer and then return that shit the day that they get it. Uh, the type of people that are, not, are usually buying these things from what I see are people that work in office or industrial in environments that where you, can, you may have a, an administrative assistant making 15 or 17 bucks an hour that doesn't get commission if he saves the boss money. So that person now has two choices. Behind door number one, they can decide that they're going to stay at work an hour late to figure out how to make a hardware hack work on the device, take accountability and responsibility for installing this into every printer in a large office or warehouse, unpaid. Behind door number two, they can say... F it, I have the boss's credit card anyway, it's his money, I'm not going to make money if I save him money on paper, so I'm just going to use his credit card to buy the OEM labels. I think on average what's going to happen is going to be number two rather than number one. Even if this was a software fix, you'd still have to kind of find it. But anything that's going to require more than two clicks on some basic website with really easy to use hacking software is, I don't think is going to be something that's going to get around this. I don't think you're going to be, this is something that's going to make a serious difference by being a hardware hack. I think it does need to be a software hack. And I know that sounds greedy because again, the people coming up with this are putting their spare time and effort into it. But I do think the reality is that this would have to be far easier for it to make a genuine impact. The people that know how to install this hack are the type of people that probably do enough research into their printer to never buy a Dymo Label Writer 550, ever, 
or re to return it the moment they buy it and they realize it doesn't work with aftermarket labels. And the type of people that are not going to do this are the type of people that, again, are, are just use their boss's credit card to buy labels and are not exactly researching the cost of paper, nor are they going to stay at work an hour late to figure out how to make this thing work when there's just no benefit in it for them. I think that the true answer here is to, the real solution is to make it as ubiquitous as humanly possible that Dymo is a company that does not allow you to use your own paper. For them to be branded with that stigma so far and so wide that even people that are clueless about tech know I'm never buying a Dymo. So that when that administrative assistant that works at the company that's not really tech savvy just decides to replace an old out of service label writer 450 with a 550 that even the, the receptionist or whatever just says, oh, don't buy a Dymo. I heard that they only work if you use their paper. It has to be that ubiquitous and that well known in order for this to actually ma happen. And unlike many other segments of the market where you can't vote with your wallet, here you can. When it comes to right to repair, a lot of people will ask, why is it that you just, why do you just not recommend products that are friendly to the things that you do on this channel? On this channel, I do component level motherboard repair of laptops. So if you want to buy a laptop where the manufacturer will provide a schematic to the end consumer, that doesn't exist. If you want to vote with your wallet, you're buying an abacus. <laughs> you're, not, you're going to be essentially walled out and locked out of modern technology and modern society if the things that we talk about on this channel are things that you want and you want to vote with your wallet. That being said, when it comes to a label printer, a black and white, low resolution, cheap label printer that allows you to use whatever paper you want, there are alternatives to the Dymo out there. And while it may be slightly mildly convenient having to uninstall your old software, install new software, find the label from the company and put it in, the, in there, I think that's a small step to take and it's a step that I think is worth taking to ensure that this is not the norm. We need to stop this from becoming the norm before it becomes the norm. And the only way to do that is to starve the beast at the point that they do it. Again, when it comes to making schematics and diagrams available to laptop motherboards and cell phone motherboards, uh, that ship has sailed. If you want to buy a phone, where they make the schematic available so somebody like me can fix it without having to pirate the schematic illegally, that ship has sailed. That doesn't exist. You can't vote with your wallet. There's nobody out there doing that. It's not like, well, if Samsung won't do it, LG will. If LG won't do it, Motorola will. If Motorola won't do it, OnePlus. Like, none of them do it. However, here we are at a critical point where one company has decided you cannot use any paper but ours, but other companies have not. To starve the beast of their money and then immediately provide that money to companies that do allow you to use any paper you want. For them to see that immediate boost in their sales while Dymo has a decrease in their sales and to let them know why would mean everything. I appreciate the work that they've done. I really do. And I don't want this video to come off as me crapping on people that are actually trying to restore your right to work on your personal property. Rather, I'm just looking at the practical ramifications of how this is likely not going to change anything because the large majority of the people that are going to use this printer are not going to do a hardware hack. At best, probably a two-click software hack because it's just not economically viable since they have the ability to run the boss's credit card and buy the paper that costs a few extra bucks. One thing that I'm also looking at and monitoring very closely with this situation, I want to see if the individuals that did this wind up getting sued by the company. As many of you know, we've been covering a company called One Wheel on this channel, and Leonard French uh, with Lawful Masses has also been doing excellent coverage of it as well, where there is a company called uh, Future Motion. They make this little one wheel electric skateboard kind of thing, but it has one wheel, so it's not really a skateboard, but I don't have a special word for it yet, so I call it electric skateboard. Sorry for people who get salty over that. And what they do is they keep you from being able to use larger batteries, and with newer iterations, you cannot even unplug the battery and then plug it back in without the device bricking itself. And a company called JW Batteries and JW Solutions is trying to come up with a solution for that. With older models, you can now put in a larger battery, not with the newer, but with the older models if you use their chip. And what they've done is they are now trying to sue that company into the ground as a result of allowing users to work on their personal property as they see fit. And Repair Preservation Group is going to be doing research. Again, we're in the early stages here, but I want to see what it is we are allowed to do, what it is we can do to potentially help them. Not Repair Preservation Group Action Fund, the uh, lobbying entity, but Repair Preservation with the C3. I want to see what type of assistance are we qualified, allowed, and able in our budget to be able to offer somebody like that. We are in the early stages of this, but I would like to see what is possible because I think it would send a chilling effect around the world if people see, wait a second, he allowed them to use whatever paper they want in their printer and he's getting sued. Wait a second, 
he's allowing somebody to replace the battery in his own product and he's getting sued, it's going to stop a lot of people from innovating. And one thing that you hear from a lot of these lob industry lobbyists is, oh, this is going to stop innovation. This is going to stop innovation. You know, if, if right to repair gets passed, you're not going to see innovation. You know what's going to stop innovation? If when people actually come up with innovative ways to ensure that you can service your own personal property, you get sued. So I want to see what happens, and I genuinely hope that they don't wind up getting in legal trouble for this. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Don't buy Dymo.